Okay, so uh, I'm here with some new stuff. Uh, well, kind of new. I've been sitting on it for a couple of days, but I've been working a lot, so <laughs> I didn't really feel like doing the videos yet. But I, I've uh, like, like I've been chomping at the bit to open them, but I didn't want to do the videos yet, and I didn't want to do the videos until I could open them. So uh, I've been I've been waiting on this for a while. But anyway, I got. Uh, <clears throat> Two new G.I. Joe classified figures today. Excuse me, I got a little itch there. Uh, I got the Cobra Trooper. And I got Stalker. I'm really excited about these these uh, G.I. Joe retro figures. Uh, did I call them retro figures before? Or did I call them classified? They're retro figures. So, uh, so I'll do the Cobra Trooper right now. And uh, I'll do Stalker next. And I'll probably wind up posting him tomorrow. But uh, the package for this one was damaged. It was the only one they had. I'm going to open them anyway, so I don't care. I don't know if somebody at some point just got too excited and ripped it off the shelf. Or uh, if somebody was trying to make it so like a collector wouldn't be able to buy it because the package was damaged. But I, I open all my stuff anyway, so I bought it. <laughs> That'll teach them. So uh, it's got a really nice piece of artwork on there with the Cobra Trooper. And I think this might be... The actual artwork from the original action figure packages. I'm not sure with these uh, retro figures if they got a hold of the original artwork and reused it. Or if they just uh, replicated it really well. Like I know on the 25th anniversary figures that was new artwork that was based on the old artwork. So and then uh, I haven't talked about this before but they've got a file card on the back. And it's not as good as the original file cards because they've got like god what five languages on here so they don't have enough room to fit all of the pertinent information so there's barely any information on there even though there's like a whole lot of text but i'll go ahead and read the english because i know how to read that language at least cobra trooper unknown role the enemy primary specialty infantry secondary specialty sabotage birthplace several countries one of the nameless, faceless legions of Cobra Command. That's literally all it says. And I'd seen where some people had said, like, well, why they drop military? You know, you say primary military specialty and secondary military specialty. And now it just says primary and secondary specialty. But uh, I suspect the real reason for that is because they just don't have a lot of room for text. So they just dropped anything that they considered to be extraneous. And a lot of stuff that I would consider to not be extraneous. So, uh, that's that's very disappointing. Like, uh, I figure this was done just so they could distribute the same figure to different countries and not have to pay for printing a new card for every single country. And I think that's kind of lame. Uh, what I would do, if I was them, is uh, do what they did with Marvel Comics in the 1980s. And for those of you who don't know, Marvel Comics in the 1980s would print out uh, two different versions of their cover. One for uh, the newsstands, you know, that would get distributed to newsstands and gas stations and supermarkets and things like that. And that would have a UPC barcode on there, not unlike this one. And uh, the, other, the other one they would print up would be one for, uh, you know, direct market sales like comic book shops and things like that. And that would not have a UPC on it. That would have like a picture of like Spider-Man's face or whatever in place of where the UPC would go. And it would also have like a slightly different corner box. Like uh, it had like an M design on it. But uh, if you know what you're looking for, you can tell the difference between the ones sent to the direct market and to the newsstand. And some people actually do. Uh, it's the same. It's not like one's the first printing and one's the second printing. But... Uh, some people do like to specify collecting the newsstand versions versus the direct market versions. Anyway, I'm talking a whole lot about Marvel Comics in a video where I should be talking about an action figure. What I would do is just like swap out the black plates during different print runs for the different countries. And I don't know if that would be as cheap as doing it this way. It would maybe be a little bit more expensive, but... I would think going that little bit of extra mile for the extra quality of having a, a decently printed file card, you know, that would be good. Plus, like, kids today wouldn't even know what a file card is. They, they don't know what this middle envelope is. It's not something that's relevant to them anymore. 
So what I would suggest Hasbro do is uh, have like a QR code on here that kids can scan with a cell phone or whatever, and then that would take them to a website which would actually have an extensive file on the character that they just bought an action figure of. So that would be the kind of interactive thing like kids today actually like, and that would be pretty fun. You know, maybe even put like a little bit of a mini video game or something in there. You know, just something simple, like maybe like a little bit of a first person shooter or a puzzle game or something. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, that would be something really cool to do. And it would definitely be better than this file card, which barely tells you anything about the character, no matter what language you're reading it in. I mean, like I said, that's a whole lot of nothing. I just read about that character, and I would assume that, you know, the French, uh, Spanish, you know, all the other languages on here, it, it's probably just as vague. So, anyway, let's go ahead and open up the action figure. And by the way, if you're somebody who does want to read the file cards on these figures, you know, they're all characters that were in the original G.I. Joe toy line. You can go and read the original file cards that were uh, written by Larry Hama. You can find those online at yojo.com. So, or, or even just Google, you know, say, Cobra Soldier File Card. This is called a Cobra Trooper, but in the original line, he was called the Cobra Soldier. I'm not sure why they changed it, but I, I tend to call them Cobra Troopers anyway. I, I, I've always called them that. So, anyway, so there's the figure. I pulled the figure out first, which is unlike me. Usually I wind up pulling all the accessories out first, but... Uh, for whatever reason, I did the figure first this time. Yeah, it looks like some of this stuff is taped in. So here we go with the X-Acto knife. And cutting through the tape. And uh, this looks to be a Dragonov sniper rifle. Or at least, uh, you know, a uh, reasonable facsimile of sorts. And I noticed the plastic on this is much softer than the type of plastic that usually they, they make this out of. I believe, like... Most G.I. Joe weapons are made out of, like, a nylon type of plastic, and this seems more like a vinyl, like a softer. I noticed that when I took it out, and I pressed down on the scope and noticed that it flexed a lot more than I thought it was. Uh, this, to me, is, like I said, it looks basically like a Dragunov sniper rifle, so that's probably what it's based off of. I don't know if it's exactly that, because I'm not much of a gun guy, Anybody who is a gun guy could probably see this and let me know in the comments. Because I would actually be interested in knowing. And he comes with this bazooka or missile launcher or whatever you want to call it. Like, to me, it looks it looks like an updated version of the weapon that comes with Zap in the original line. So I'm going to say bazooka. Whether that's an actual technical term or not. I don't really care about that, so you don't have to let me know in the comments. <laughs> Somebody probably will. And then, uh, we got an automatic pistol. Looks like a forty-five, kind of like what the Shadow uses. So it's a nice little gun. And then, we got a knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. I see you've played Knifey Spoonie before. And, uh, nice little knife. It's, uh, I think a little more detailed than the knife that's this size that came with a lot of Pursuit of Cobra figures. And then we have his helmet. Uh, standard-looking Cobra Trooper helmet. And then a figure stand for the figure to come on. And it says Cobra Trooper on it. It has a Cobra emblem. Now... What I think is unusual about these two figures, and I'm guessing it'll be usual going forward, is that these are not uh, him and Stalker. Uh, neither one of these are uh, kit bashed together figures like what we had in uh, the earlier figures in the line. Uh, these are actually newer sculpts. I'm going to turn this down a little bit so I can get better angles on them. So yeah, these are newer sculpts. Uh, I had, I haven't looked at one yet, but I'd had somebody online saying that they were more similar to the Jazzwares, uh, Fortnite figures, and they do seem like they're a little similar to that. Some of these joints are a little stiff. I'm being really careful in trying to move them, 
but I don't know if I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to try to move that elbow until I can heat it up and get it softened up some. So the articulation scheme is pretty similar to what we've been getting on the modern style G.I. Joe's already. Uh, there is a boot cut here, like where the boot is, you can actually swivel the foot around that way, and that's pretty cool. That's something that's not usual on G.I. Joe figures, but it's pretty welcome. His feet are kind of ginormous. Like, I don't know if that's coming through on the camera, but looking at him in person, it's very much, uh, you know, like Cowboy Curtis says on uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. You know what they say? Big feet, big boots. So, he looks like he has the gun holster on the web gear that's uh, standard. On, like, the old Cobra Trooper had that, and... The 25th anniversary Cobra Trooper had that, and unfortunately, that is just a gun that's just kind of sculpted onto the web gear. It does not come off. So, I guess I'm spoiled on Marauder Task Force parts, and how with those, you can oftentimes, uh, <laughs> you know, like, like put holsters onto the characters, but this is just one that's molded on there. I suppose, if one uh, were so inclined, they could cut this off of the figure and replace it with a Marauder holster and put a gun in there, but I think it'll be okay. He does have a holster on this leg, which looks like it should hold the pistol. So there we go. His sidearm fits in there nice and snugly. You can see it's not falling out or anything. So, and then the knife actually does have a slot for it on the web gear. So we can, there's a couple little straps that the knife should fit underneath and it seems like it is a little bit of a tight fit but if I wiggle it back and forth I can fit it in there so there we go you can strap the the knife to the front of the web gear very reminiscent of uh, the early wave of G.I. Joe it's like how the original stalker figure and snake eyes hawk grunt and Breaker, I believe, are the ones who shared that torso. They all had a knife that you could, uh, well, that was sculpted onto the front of the figure. And, uh, but this one is actually removable. So let's go ahead and put his helmet on and see how it looks with his helmet. Well, first, let's go ahead and look at his head. And you can see he's got, like, the standard Cobra balaclava over the lower half of the face. And he's got, like, a, I think a more stylish hairdo than we're used to seeing. Like the 25th anniversary where you could remove the helmets, they were just bald underneath. And then some of them, they painted the hair on there, but it was still sculpted to be bald. And then the uh, uh, the Pursuit of Cobra and later versions of the Cobra Trooper, that one had like a flat top. No, wait, that wasn't, that wasn't, that was before Pursuit of Cobra, that was Resolute. But his hair is like a little more sort of, you know, feathered, combed to the side. Looks almost like a superhero's type of haircut, but this guy is not a superhero. He is absolutely a villain. So let's put the helmet on, and the helmet seems to fit on there pretty snugly. And see what he looks like with the helmet. I think he looks pretty good. I do feel like this this uh, web gear kind of obscures with the pistol the cobra emblem that's on his chest, and then he's got like pouches strapped to his arms. The original Cobra Trooper had a detail that's I don't, I've never seen it on any other version of the Cobra Trooper, which is uh, you can see it on the artwork here. He actually has a garrote sculpted onto his like a piano wire with two little grips that he can strangle people to death with. <laughs> and I've never seen that on any of the other ones. It's a detail I've always missed. Uh, so the legs seem not really loose, but they do move rather freely. I don't think loose is quite the right term for it. It looks like it's on a plastic bar, and it's got a cut here uh, right at the top of the thigh. So these are actually a little bit posable, or a little bit more posable than a lot of your figures that you would have gotten from uh, uh, 25th anniversary on. So... As far as articulation goes, this is a great figure. Let's see how well he can hold his sniper rifle. 
and we can uh, slide that in here. And then since this has a trigger guard in it, I want to try to get the finger through the trigger guard. And the the stock of it seems to be a little warped from being in the package, but that actually helps him grip it a little bit better, I think. And then, like I said, I'm not really wanting to bend this other elbow because it seems really stiff, and I want to try to hit it with a, a hairdryer or something before I try to move it. But even then, I can still, even with the elbow being fairly straight, I feel like I can still get it into a pretty good rifle position. Maybe I can even get it up to where he's uh, taking aim through the scope. Yeah, that works pretty well. So he'd have to be like shooting down from a rooftop or something. But once I uh, once I heat up the joint here, I'm sure it'll come loose. And then I can probably get even more awesome poses out of this figure. But I think that works pretty well. Let's see how he looks with the bazooka. So, again, it's got a trigger guard on there, so I'm going to try to get the finger into it. I really like this bazooka. I think it's really cool. It might seem kind of odd to give a Cobra Trooper an olive green weapon like this, but I think it looks really cool. I think that the, the color contrast is good. Yeah, I'm actually get, able to get like a pretty good pose out of that, too. I think that looks a little bit better even than the sniper rifle did. I can't quite line the scope up with his eye, but, you know, that's probably good enough for an action figure. That's probably about as close as any action figure could get as far as that goes. But, yeah, uh, overall, this is a good figure, and I'll probably pick up more if I can find them. But uh, I haven't had much luck finding a lot of these G.I. Joe retro figures anyway. Uh, 